Hi everyone, Barbara Rankin here today with another video tutorial using Gypsy Soul Laser Cuts Pyramid Box. I first removed any chads left in the holes with a paper piercer tool. Use whatever you have. Next, I like to dry fit the pieces to make sure they are situated correctly. After I get it assembled, it is ready for gluing. Use a clear drying white glue for this. I like to use Aileen's Fast Grab Tacky Glue, but again, use whatever you have or prefer. Okay, it is all glued together and dry. So I have chosen this pretty paper from Blue Fern Studios called Timeless, which is quite appropriate for what I plan to place on these shells. First, I took some measurements and determined that I needed three pieces cut consecutively from the paper to measure six and a quarter by three and a quarter. Keep the design in order as you glue them onto the back of the display. I chose this print from the same collection to go around the open shells. From the back, I could easily measure the widest points and cut the paper vertically at 10 inches. I used the marks on the back to determine where to cut the paper vertically again, so I cut the paper two inches from the top and in one and three quarter inches from either side. That way I was able to remove the middle section and set that aside. Here's what I mean. Using a ruler, I drew pencil lines two inches down from the top and one and three quarter inches in from each side. Then I cut along those lines, removing the center piece for use later. I intentionally left an extra quarter inch of paper around the inside. To make it easier to glue my paper down and leave that extra bit to cover the sides of the shelves, I used my scoring tool and scored one quarter inch from the three inside sides. I cut into each corner at an angle and folded them along the crease line. This made it easier for me to lay the paper in place and glue it down. I will finish this off camera and come back to show you how it looks. On the back, you can see the excess paper, which will need to be trimmed off and sanded for a nice finished look. Here it is all glued down, and you can see how that extra quarter inch of paper has covered that inside corner, which will give a more finished look in the end. I still need to trim the outer edges, but first I need to finish covering the last few inches where my paper was not long enough. So I took an extra piece of the same paper that measured two inches tore along one edge and cut two pieces large enough to fill the gap. I inked the torn edges with a matching ink color. In this case, I used Victorian velvet to help disguise it. Torn edges disappear easier when trying to dis disguise a seam. I gave each piece a bit of a crease first. Then I added the glue, aligned the outer edge up, and as I burnished with my bone folder, allowed the paper to crease and fold into the corner. Here you can see where the paper has covered that in inside corner nicely and the seam is hardly visible. Off camera, I trimmed that outer edge and used sandpaper to finish off any rough spots, but I left one little section to show you how to smooth out those cut paper edges. Emery boards help you get into tighter spaces when needed. Can you see how much smoother that looks now? Okay. <clears throat> we have everything um, done on the front here. And we've got to do the sides and the top around here. And we still haven't done the back. So what I want to do, this is the piece that I had trimmed off before I turned it over and did this this around this surround here 
So what I want to do, and I do want to put that along the side here. So what I'm going to do on this piece is trim two inches off of this side by, I need at least 10 inches, but if I want to wrap it here and wrap it down here, I'm going to add a half an inch to that 10. So I'll cut it at two and 10 and a half inches. So let me go do that and I'll come right back. Okay, so I've got my two uh, pieces that measure um, two by ten and a half, and I'm just going to crease this just a, ever so slightly because I want to get it to start here and then come down, and the same on this side. Just going to put a small crease there. Try to do it as straight as you can. And then when I get to the top, I can fold it over. And so, let me use this section here. Um, it, it's going to be better to put the glue on the paper rather than on the chipboard, especially when you want to bend it over. This particular paper is, is like heavy duty cardstock. Using a thinner paper won't be quite as uh, quite as difficult, but um, this is harder to bend and uh, manipulate than a, a thinner paper would. So, so if I put the um, the glue on here, some of the moisture will go into the paper and soften it, allowing me to. Um, To bend it more easily, bend it, fold it, and that sort of thing. So let's go ahead and this is the side with the bird and try to keep my head out of the way and just kind of stick that down in there. Get my bone folder and start getting those air bubbles out. Okay. Mm -hmm, okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I think you can see, I hope, extra glue. Might not have gotten enough on that end. Uh, just add a little bit more. And fold that right over. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I'll go ahead and do that on this side. And um, we'll put this side here and glue it down, fold it over, and let me come back and show you afterwards. Okay, now both sides are on. And got this top piece I want to do, and I did cut this piece to fit. We don't really want it longer because we did wrap, wrap our edges there. So once again, I'm going to add the PVA glue to the paper. Let's make sure I got the right side going here. Mm -hmm. You can see I'm not really using a lot. This PVA glue is very, very strong. It has very little water in it, which is why bookbinders like it so much. And then I'm going to stick it right there. Okay, let me get this under here, this here. 
and see if I can get that right in there. Yes, indeed. Okay. And oh, this is where your bone folder comes in quite handy. You can get that burnished down quite well. Get the glue, the paper, and the glue all nice and tight on there. That paper is not going anywhere. And there you go. If there's any sanding to be, to be done, this is the time to do it. Go ahead and uh, um, let the, well let your glue dry first, of course, and then. I like to get my edges nice and tight on the side here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, we'll go ahead and measure for the shelves. I've got, uh, we've got to do the upper and lower part of each compartment. So there's one, two, three, four, five. This will be done separately. So I need five pieces that will fit inside along there. So I will need five pieces that measure six and a quarter by the two inches, the two inch depth, six and a quarter by two. I am going to turn it so I'm going to say six and three quarters so I can turn it on each one before I put the side pieces in. So six and three quarters I'll cut by two inches and I'll be right back. So I've decided to cut the uh, papillon and I'm going to use this side for inside the, um, the shelves and um, I will cut th those at two inches by the six and three quarters and I'll come back. Off camera, I glued the pieces for the top and bottom of each shelf and cut pieces to use for the sides between each shelf. I measured these to be two by three and a quarter inch. However, I did cut the bottom one a bit longer so I could cover the inside corner for a finished look. For the top of the pyramid base, I cut paper three inches by eight inches and measured how far in from each edge I needed to cut a slit into the paper to make it fit nice and snugly. I measured three quarters inch in from each side and used my ruler to line it up. I used my craft knife to cut the slit with about a one eighth inch opening, no further than two inches deep, so the paper would slip in nice and snug. Always dry fit the paper before gluing it down. Once I was happy with my cuts, I used my PVA glue to adhere it and burnished the paper well with a bone folder. For the front and sides of the pyramid base, I cut strips of two inch wide paper and rather than trying to figure the angle, I simply folded and creased them along the box itself, trimming the excess paper as necessary. I did leave, however, a quarter of an inch on the side pieces so I could fold them over, covering the corners while the front was cut to the exact measurement. And then I glued them down. Next, I cut a 5 8 inch wide strip of the paper for the sides and a 3 8 inch piece for the front, and I mitered the corners before I glued them down. This gives a nice finished look. Okay, I need to cover the back and the bottom, so I'm going to try and utilize my papers as best as possible. So since the back is 14 inches by 10 inches, and my paper is only 12 inches, it's going to be two inches short. If I cut this piece two inches off vertically, which is all I need left, 
And what I thought I would do is leave this information strip from the manufacturer and fold that over and that will kind of cover that outside corner for me nice and neat. This piece I think will turn on its side and butt up against this piece and I've got just enough space and it sort of looks like the flowers are going around the corner there. Let me see if I can bring that down into view for you. So that is my plan. I'll cut that end off. And then after it's all glued down, I'll come back and trim the decorative edge. But that way also, I just need a piece of paper that measures the same 10 inches across, but only four inches up for the bottom. And I was going to do something like this. So that will give me a nice covered edge on the back here. So I will do all of this off camera. I don't want to bore you with the things you already know how to do. So after I do that, I'll come back and we will continue on. I saved this small scrap because it has the paper collection's name that's located on the bottom of each sheet, Timeless, which is the title for my display. Then I chose one of the stackable label shapes that the word would fit onto and glued the top piece down over the word. While the glue was drying, I painted the bottom label with DecoArt Timeless Chalk Paint and the flat side of a makeup sponge. Using the flat side allows me to paint the intricate cut chipboard without plugging the holes with paint. Then I cut out the top label around the word and sanded the edges with an emery board. Then I glued that to the center of the label. And I got it all centered nice and neat and then I glued the whole piece to the center of the display box. Then I painted all the bare chipboard edges with the timeless chalk paint for a more finished look. For the bottom of the display, I chose memories from the words and phrases number one set. And I painted it with the timeless chalk paint and a makeup sponge. After it dried, I glued it to the bottom, centering it in the space. For more texture and dimension, I chose this pretty floral border stick. It comes in several different size pieces, but are very easy to piece together. I use a paper piercer tool to remove any tiny pieces that did not fall out during the cutting process. I also chose to use these Victorian corners to decorate the top corners. Once again, I painted all the pieces with the timeless chalk paint and I let them dry. Next, I poured some tacky glue onto a palette, but before gluing the border sticks down, I dry fit the pieces to determine where I would need to cut them and how to fit them together seamlessly. I crease the end to determine where to make a cut into the border. When I was ready, I picked the glue up with the flat side of a makeup sponge. This made it easy and quick to apply the glue to these intricate laser cuts. I think you'll agree that it really does add that vintage feel I was going for in a shabby sort of way. Next, I decided these topiary trees would be really pretty added to either side of the shells. So I painted the greenery portion with the Spanish moss chalk paint and dried them with my heat tool. Both sides need to be painted because they will be seen from the sides in the back.
I used Lumiere 3D brass paint to dab the color over the pot portions. The dabbing motion with the sponge gave me lots of texture. Repeat this process on the reverse side of both pieces. I decided to add a second coat of the brass paint to give the pots even more texture. I mixed a tiny bit of carbon black with the rustic chalk paint to darken the rustic color a bit. Then I colored the trunks of both trees with this mixture. Don't worry if you get any on the green as it will be covered by another step coming up. Now I'm going to add flower soft to the greenery portions of the topiary trees. I am using Christmas green, pine green, and shamrock green. With the makeup sponge, I am dabbing a thick coat of the tacky glue over the green portions. I set the tree onto a clean piece of paper to catch the excess flower soft so that I can return it to the jar. This is Christmas green, followed by the fine pine green flower soft which I used as a filler in case I had gaps showing. On the next tree, I did the same thing, only I used the ultra-fine pine green alone. Each tree needs to be done the same on the reverse side after the glue dries. I want to show you that on the reverse side of each tree, I left a narrow line free from glue and flower soft to allow me to glue that section along the thin edge of the display box. Lastly, I added tiny specks of glue to adhere bits of the shamrock green to give the appearance of new growth on the topiaries. I wanted to give some added realism to my pots, so I used my paper piercer to scratch details into the paint. Then I realized I needed to scratch away some of the paint beneath the tree trunk so I could add more brown paint to extend the trunks to look like they are in the pot, not behind the pot. There. That certainly looks a lot better, don't you think? And just when I thought I was finished, I realized I needed some shading on those pots. So I used the brown paint in my sponge and added the shading needed to bring the dimension to make the pots appear more round. And finally, it's time to glue the pots to the two sides of the box. Here's where those channels I left come in handy. I am using the topiaries as a ruler to determine where my glue needs to go and how high. Stay tuned, I have still photos of my display box finished and loaded with my timeless treasures coming up. If you enjoyed today's project video, please give me a thumbs up and I hope you will consider subscribing to my channel so you won't miss any future tutorials. As always, thanks for watching and always take time to play.